Welcome to my lecture in which I want to talk about Hannah Williger's body images uh, from a specifically contemporary perspective. Um, as someone who, like many others, um, has also been increasingly shaped by images in social media for some years now. Um, but how do Williger's images work against this background? That's my question of uh, this lecture. Um, what perhaps new meanings, uh, indeed what significance do they have in a present in which images of bodies in particular are very popular and widespread in the social media? Um, well, perhaps it's a little bit astonishing for you, but based on my own viewing experiences, I cannot help but um, place Hannah Williger's photographic work in the history of iconoclasm. Because in each of her pictures, a great deal is not shown or even made unrecognizable. Tight cropping, blurring, underexposed zones, all this gives the impression that the photographs deny their function as pictures. And the most striking thing about them for me are image distortions. When I think of Hannah Williger, I even feel downright trepidation because there is so little to see in her picture. And I wonder what kind of attitude to life, indeed, what kind of experience of the world the artist had in order to so severely limit the depiction that photographs reliably provide. Well, you may ask, perhaps should that have something to do with the fact that uh, Hannah Williger was sick more often than average or are her brittle defensive photographs more a consequence of the fact that Hannah Willeker was influenced by minimal art, was influenced by land art or by other art forms, which in turn relied on reduction, on refusal, on sometimes rigorous forms of sensual aestheticism. Since Hannah Williger has her own body as her subject in most of the photographs, thus obstructing its depiction, her iconoclastic practices could also be interpreted as evidence of an auto-aggressive attitude, I'd say. You can ask, mustn't she have had difficulties with her body, at least regarded it with skepticism, if she made its visibility such a problem? And aren't the deliberate disruptions of the images even to be understood as gestures of self-punishment? Indeed, isn't Williger engaging in symbolic self-extinction with the way she parceled out, she fragmented, she blurred, she discolored her body in her photographs. Well, perhaps you may ask um, if she is close to an artist like Günther Bruce, who later described his painful, brutal experiments with his own body in actions like Zerreisprobe from 1970, soberly and trivially as body analysis. I prefer not to show you a picture from that um, because I don't want to trigger you. And when uh, Williger herself noted that she listens with the camera along my naked bald body around it into its ruid, um, one believes one can also read from these words an enormous hardness and coldness, even a will to distance oneself. But apart from the fact that she had to contort, to squirm, to scratch or to spread herself quite a bit for some shots, Williger did not really maltreat or even seriously injure her body in the pursuit of her artistic work. 
that's recognized. In contrast to an artist like Günther Bruce or to other performance artists, the autoaggression is rather articulated solely in the photographs and the tableaus assembled from them in the case of Benita. And this, I would say, places her oeuvre in a different tradition, as artists have repeatedly approached their own bodies photographically in order to dissect them with a ruthlessly analytical gaze to such an extent that the images seem violent. John Copland, for example, dissected his aging body from the 1980s onwards, like Williger with a Polaroid camera. In his case, it is almost always possible to see which part of the body is visible, but wrinkles, fat bulges, or skin blemishes are shot so unadorned as if Copland only considered himself worthy of a picture if and in so far as he looks deformed, perhaps even a little disgusting. Lucas Samaras repeatedly placed himself and his body in extreme positions from the 1960s onwards in order to explore himself as fully as possible and to document this in various media, often with Polaroids as well. Unlike Williger and Copland, he also presents his face which he distorts mimically to the extreme, as if he were suffering physical or psychological pain, for example, exposed to violence. Thomas Lorschütz, who concentrated on his own body in his early work created in the GDR in the 1980s, perhaps in a kind of inner exile, also likes to show parts of the face in mimic states of exception. And then, like uh, Williger, he harshly juxtaposes several fragments of the body in tableaus as if it were dismembered or abstract material. The image of a use of violence emerges all the more. The abstraction that comes with photographing relatively small parts of the body is due, as in Billiger's case, to the fact that the camera cannot be held far enough away from the body to be able to record it completely. Williger herself illustrated uh, this predicament um, in times um, when selfie sticks uh, did not exist, by pointing out that the greatest distance between camera and body art, body part, is the outstretched length of my arm or to uh, of my arm to my tooth. Well, to sum up, um, for recent art history, one could speak of a boom in auto aggressive body images. And we have to take the question, why, uh, where, where does the, the special, the dissecting view of one's own body come from? Does this perhaps articulate a long-standing antibody mentality, often fed primarily by religion? Or is this view the result of internalized ways of talking about bodies with which every deviation from a supposed norm is problematized. Do attempts to provide a picture of the body that is as objective and factual as possible only make it all the more um, visible what kind of prejudgments, indeed what kind of violent aggressive discourses about bodies are in circulation in general? This may be asked. Um, the significance um, of the artistic work of well, Hannah Williger and the mentioned other artists could then be that they have enabled a critical revision of prevailing body discourses. 
their works could become all the more important because other debates were emerging at the same time that sensitized people to body issues. Um, for example, you may think of uh, Michel Foucault's concept of biopower, which soon became very influential, or you may uh, think of uh, Laura Malvi's analysis of the male gaze regime vis-a-vis -vis the female body, which established new standards uh, of reflection of body images. At the same time, however, the works of Foucault and Malvi made us aware of how firmly anchored many conventions related to the human body are, and how difficult protracted and by no means irreversible, irreversible emancipatory attempts would be. And I think some artistic oeuvres of the one of Hannah Williger were not enough for this. Presumably, in historical retrospect, we will one day come to the view that major changes only became possible when many more people than ever before were able to determine for themselves the images that were created and made public of them and their bodies. First of all, digitalization had to progress Smartphones and social media platforms had to establish themselves until previous ways of looking at and speaking about the body could gradually be overcome. Even if smartphone images may be in the tradition of polaroids in terms of their rapid producibility, there are at least, I would say, two technical, functional differences between today's photographs of one's own body and projects such as Hannah Willigers. On the one hand, um, smartphones are not only cameras, but also offer numerous features for editing the resulting images. You can make unpleasant parts beautiful, you can put a filter over the entire photo, but uh, also uh, grotesquely distort yourself with the help of, help of apps, thus alienating and semantically coding the respective image in many ways. This is attractive above all, because the photos are hardly ever taken just for oneself, but, and this is the second important difference, they are usually addressed to others. They are posted, they are sent as a tweet or as a WhatsApp message, though they have a strong communicative and social function. Hashtags, marches, verbal comments that are added to the pictures reinforce their uh, respective message. However, the media infrastructures within which, which images are created and published not only give them a binding context, but also favor loud and irritating representations. Even photographs with artistic pretensions are then at the same time committed to other aesthetics, since uh, they are in direct competition for attention with images with advertising intentions, or also with many pop cultural lifestyle oriented stagings. From today's perspective, Hannah Williger's photographic works therefore appear all the more brittle and reserved, I'd say. And at the same time, however, they act as historical models for such of what circulates and has influence in social media. But well, it's still a widespread concern to confront oneself with one own, one's own body in an unembellished way, to record it objectively, directly, also to document again and again places and phenomena that testify to age, to lack of fitness or to illness. But one wants to free oneself from the negative connotations and exchange any critical, defeatist view of one's own body for a view that testifies to self-confidence that one is proud of how one looks. So in a great communal effort, thanks to hashtags like nobody 
shame. People are working on a revaluation on countless accounts day after day. While it may be common in some milieus uh, to fix every flaw, first with via digital app and later via cosmetic surgery, in many other milieus, people do not want to change their bodies, but distance themselves from possible or from real criticism of them. Those who take pictures of their bodies therefore often even demonstrate pleasure and joy. They celebrate the desire for evaluation, but often use additional means to do so. The English artist uh, and photographer Maisie Cousins, for example, likes to show parts of the body in close-up, just as Williger did, and uh, likewise not clearly identifiable, but photographs them in full focus and usually also brightly lit, moreover oiled, provided with colored liquids or decorated with flower petals, food or other elements. The images are designed to first push feelings of reluctance to the extreme, but then to allow them to tip over in such a way that an unencumbered sensuality is conveyed. The autoaggressive tendencies of earlier body images have thus been completely eradicated, I would say, and instead of being confronted with photos that problematize and deny their own pictorial character and thus possess iconoclastic traits, here we get show shots that show as much as possible. And uh, well, this is probably another reason why. Mm, Hannah Williger's photos seem much more violent and autoaggressive today than when they were taken 30, 40 years ago. If uh, some photos of cousins can also be understood as offensive depictions of long taboo topics such as menstruation or obesity, and that thus as feminist statements, Many other images in social media are created specifically as part of political activist campaigns. They are intended to overcome any pejorative way of speaking about bodies and to establish a plural understanding of beauty. The body positivity movement in particular has uh, developed several new iconographies and visual languages in this regard in recent years. And other projects um, have grown up in political and aesthetic uh, proximity to it, which for their part are aimed at imposing new, more open and more complex standards for the evaluation of bodies. Um, one of these projects was initiated in 2018 by Hungarian-born makeup artist Esther Macha on the Instagram account Makeup Brutalism. Well, the reference to brutalism as an architectural style signals that um, Macha is concerned with using cosmetics in a raw and very direct way. Instead of covering up impurities and serving conventional beauty images, these are to be deconstructed and replaced. Like Williger, Macha likes to show sections of the body abstracted, for example, rotated by about 90 degree or 180 degree, but this is mainly to show off the skin like a painting surface and the dysfunctionally used cosmetic products like painting materials. One should first see the photo as a colorful image and only then realize that the face has been painted with it against any beauty convention. The first impression should help to break away from previous norms and discover new scope. On the account makeup brutalism, however, there are also photos that were taken without the use of cosmetics and um, that show in a different way how conventions in dealing with the body shape it. Uh, for example, trousers or bras often constrict and leave indentations or redness on the skin. 
but they too can be photographed in such a way that they suddenly appear as a form of ornament, indeed as an alternative body adornment. And again, the goal, I would say, is a re-evaluation, just as body positivity campaigns and net feminist image projects in general are not about making a phenomenon, a wrinkle, a pimple, a redness disappear, but about making a different, a freer, a more joyful, more playful relationship to it possible. And in comparison, Hannah Williger's oeuvre is much less pointed because not only do her pictures fail to show, to show much, but they are also designed for the white cube, which excludes social, political, or otherwise instrumental uh, contexts. Rather, they should be seen as some deaths in their autonomy. Therefore, Williger's images of the body are something fundamentally different, I would say, from images, however uh, similar on the outside, um, that have their place today in social media. Nevertheless, the latter owe a great deal to the formal decisiveness, to the rigorous severity and ruthlessness of Williger and other artists of her generation. They were the first to test image patterns that were able to develop social political relevance decades later under completely different framework conditions and which have since developed so much that the view of bodies has actually become different. Thank you very much for your attention.